Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein's saga. And as you remember, 1905 was very good for Akiba Rubinstein. He won the tournament in Barman and got his master title. And also after that tournament he won with Jacques Mises 3-0 in the, in the match uh, played in Łódź. So very impressive year. And then in January of 1906 uh, Akiba Rubinstein attended the St. Petersburg tournament. It was all Russian Masters tournament, fourth edition. And uh, Akiba Rubinstein played in the third edition and he, it was his first tournament where he got the uh, fifth place. So now he want to, you know, play much better. And, uh, and yeah, he play um, in St. Petersburg. He went there with uh, uh, Gersh Salve from his uh, club in Łódź. So both of them uh, visit the, the All Russian Masters tournament again. And without further ado, let's jump into the tournament's game. The time control was two hours for 30 moves and then one hour for another 15 moves. And first game I would like to show you Akiba Rubinstein uh, play as black and he is 23 years old and his ranking according to chess metrics uh, 2562 so a um, very strong master at that time and his opponent um, Stefan Izbinski from uh, Ukrainian um, uh, Kiev club uh, of course there was no U Ukraine at that time there was also no Poland so both of players had the Russian passport and um, both of them could attend the uh, tournament in St. Petersburg. Uh, Stefan Izbinski play as white, his ranking 2527 and he is 21 years old. Uh, okay, so let's jump into the game. We have e4 by Izbinski, e5 by Rubinstein, knight f3, knight c6, bishop g5, a6, uh, so we have Rui Lopez on the board, bishop a4, knight f6, pretty standard, and here we have castle. Uh, bishop on e7 by Rubinstein, close variation, and here d3. d6 by Rubinstein, we have c3, uh, also pretty standard, making a space for the bishop, uh, and here Rubinstein play the castle. Knight B on D2 and here surprise uh, Rubinstein plays Knight on E8. This idea is is forgotten now. It's not playable in the in the tournament on the top level, but it's quite interesting preparing early F5. We have Rook on E1, so that's pretty standard and G6. Uh, g6 with the, with the idea of Fianchetto the bishop and then support um, of course f5. Uh, and now this bishop can't jump uh, easily on h6 which would be dangerous but we have knight on f1. So now this is um, the threat we have bishop on f6. Uh, bishop on h6 attacking the uh, the rook and bishop on g7 queen on d2 so now this is a, a pretty standard attack on the on the king's indian defense where where bishops go on h6 and the bishops can be uh, you know exchange uh, f5 by Rubinstein and now bishop on g5. So Izbinski resigned from um, exchanging the bishops. He he thought that, okay, this bishop gonna be stronger on g5. We have knight on f6 and e takes on f5. g takes on f5, h3 uh, and here knight on e7. Uh, knight 3 on h2. So um, this move is, it looks like it's f4 is prepared, but f4 doesn't look like very strong move because f4 actually weakened the position of the king. And, uh, but there is no other reason to, to, uh, to play that. Rubinstein play knight on g6, uh, pretending that he want to prevent that. Uh, however, f4 is not really great move. Uh, what would be better here for white? Probably d4. And now 
if e takes on d4, then uh, black would have the isolated pawn. So probably e4 could be played. And then after h4, white stands slightly better. And also after knight on g3, they can push this pawn and, and the position of white can be very active and very nice. However, white has a different plan here, f4. And it seems like... Um, Izbinski had this plan before, so he didn't uh, look at the position what else can be played. Uh, F4 was played. And now black start to stand slightly better. We have h6 attacking the bishop. Bishop, of course, can't go on the um, h4 because it could be um, taken. So f takes on e5 is the only move. h takes on g5 and now e takes on f6. We have queen on f6, knight on g3. Knight on f4 and Rubinstein has a very nice um, knight on the outpost on f4. And um, so Izbinski didn't like it. Knight e2 challenging that knight. Uh, Rubinstein retreat and said, okay, if you move this knight, I still can jump there um, later. And we have knight on d4. And first Rubinstein plays c6. So now this bishop actually has nothing to do on this diagonal. Um, and Izbinski told, okay, this knight is very annoying and uh, I don't want it to, you know, jump somewhere there. Uh, so first bishop on d1 attacking this, um, this knight. Uh, but we are in the situation where it's, it's, it's very, actually very interesting. So I would like you to pause the video and find quite interesting tactic for black, what Rubinstein could play, uh, however he didn't play, for some reason which I will explain you later. But for now, um, I think it's very nice idea to find something in this situation while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So as you know, this game was played uh, in Russia, uh, but the chess world actually followed the games from the tournament as well. And this game was um, described in Emmanuel Lasker magazine, um, and he and he put some comments also about that move. So it's very tempting actually to play queen on d4 with check. Uh, very very interesting move. Um, but it's not really winning. C takes on d4 and then bishop takes on d4 with check. And now if the king is moved, then of course we have checkmate as this knight is a very powerful knight and then can checkmate the king. And uh, that would be nice. However, white of course have um, the moves like um, can move the, the queen, so, you know, give back the material and black would have the extra pawn. That would be good. But rook e3 also could be played. And after f4, for example, queen on, um, on a5 or any other move. And then after bishop on e3, king f1, knight on g3, king e1, uh, for example, bishop on f5. And it's totally unclear what's going on here. The material is we cannot say equal, is totally unbalanced. So both of sides have very interesting play. Black seems like have um, more active pieces and, uh, and the position of the king would be safer in the corner, but there are no pawns in the front of the king. So it's not really clear. And white actually can get some attacking chances as well. So this, this knight also can, can come to attack. The queen can come somehow. Black has to be very careful. However, for now, uh, white king is under attack. So uh, it would be very unclear. This is why Rubinstein uh, preferred to play more solid game. And he played knight on f4 as planned. Of course, this is his favorite outpost for the knight. So that's how he play. Knight e2 by Izbinski. So he want to, you know, exchange that again. And of course, um, now Rubinstein can go to h5 back and probably we would have threefold repetition. But Rubinstein wanted to win. So he played knight on e6. 
we have knight on g3 and now bishop on g6 now uh, this bishop on the is on the diagonal with the queen we have queen on f2 bishop on d7 and now bishop on f3 rook a to e8 and here we are in critical moment of the game where white actually don't have easy time to find the 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 plan for the game and that was very characteristic for for rubinstein games where the game seems to be equal but the opponent have actually problems with with you know executing any plans even finding any plans what to play here d4 that's that's the move which would be correct uh, queen on b6 but after bishop on c8 what to play now queen on f2 uh, it, it's nothing concrete d4 and and then what next so um, double the rooks it also doesn't work because uh, the knight can jump on f4 uh, rook on e3 is even worse because of the tactic here what to play Izbinski play rook on f1, but this actually mm, allowed Rubinstein to create a very strong attack, which uh, Rubinstein didn't do. He did it later. He, he still prepared. He improved position of all his pieces before he attacked. But actually he could, because now this rook is not the, on, the, on the open file and g4 could be played. And now if bishop on e2, then um, the knight could jump on f4 and get the very strong attack uh, but if h takes on g4 then actually knight on c5 could be very very strong now this is the threat so white has to do something about that king on h1 uh, and here bishop on e3 anyway uh, so queen has to be moved c2 for example and now queen on h4 attacking the the knight now a um, knight can move on f5 bishop f5 g takes on f5 and now bishop on f4 and white are in the huge troubles now the rooks can move and 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 help in attacking uh, so white would have to sacrifice some material here however rubinstein didn't see clear how to continue that attack so first after rook on f1 he prepare a rook on e7 so bring the rook on the h file that would uh, help this attack first uh, we have rook a to d1 probably a rook on e1 could be um, better because of the control of this um, uh, of this square on e3 which is um, quite important as this tactic would be you know still possible to execute uh, and now we have rook on h7 by Rubinstein and again what to play by white um, very difficult d4 is recommended by the engine and as you see it's uh, it brings nothing on the table so um, Izbinski actually tried to be active and play bishop on e4 and of course bishop can't be taken because of the queen attack on the queen and winning the material so um, of course pushing uh, also doesn't work because of the um, uh, of the attack on the rook uh, but Rubinstein simply play knight on f4 and now this bishop is actually under attack so Rubinstein won the tempo or actually two tempi and then after um, bishop on f3 it's his move uh, and again now g4 would be even stronger uh, so rubinstein could attack with the rook on h7 so after g4 h takes on g4 f takes on g4 um, the lot of pieces would be you know exchange B bishop takes on g4 bishop takes on g4 and then knights on g4 and after queen on h4 uh, the knight is under attack uh, so knight can exchange for the bishop but then we would have this this battery on h file which is not really comfortable then maybe queen on f3 but then black can play absolute good move king on h8 very good move actually the best in the position and now what's the point of that move now black can pick up this knight and once it's done then the knight can jump here uh, and fork the king on the um, and the queen and uh, nothing can be done 
this knight can come with the check that was the issue if the king is on g8 and it would not work this is why um, uh, this g4 attack would work now much better but rubinstein was not in a hurry he played bishop on g7 he know already he has a better posi position and now we have another threat by rubinstein now rook can hit h3 and once it's taken then the knight actually can take h3 and uh, fork the king and the queen uh, knight on e2 would be the best and now if rook takes then of course knight can pick up the the knight on f4 but we have king on h1 by izbinski here queen on h6 so uh, creating the battery on h file uh, we have queen on g1 and now the position of white is very very defensive uh, we have d5 now we have d4 and then g4 so now rubinstein told okay now i'm ready for g4 and now i have these two heavy pieces on the h file so now it's time to attack so as you see rubinstein improved the position of all pieces and then all of them are you know playing important role in attack it's not like he could win before but he was to he wanted to be sure the attack gonna be you know 100 percent um, successful h takes on g4 f takes on g4 and now bishop on e2 and now final blow by akiba rubinstein queen on h4 and then asking this knight hey buddy what are you gonna do and actually the knight is trapped this is the another game we are showing that um, the knight actually don't have any moves and um, all of these uh, squares of course are uh, you know uh, guarded or blocked by other pieces so uh, white gonna lose the knight and actually in this position Stefan Izbinski resigned the game so very very brilliant attack and uh, as you see first Rubinstein improved the position of all pieces and then just execute the attack which can't be defended with a lot of threats mating threat of course and um, and then winning the material is another threat what could be played here rook h3 let's say uh, white want to defend uh but it doesn't work simply uh, knight takes on d3 bishop takes on d3 and now rook is under attack so rook h6 and that's enough white doesn't have any counterplay knight f5 now now we have the spot for the knight uh, but simply exchange and after uh, rook on f5 if white want to exchange more pieces then problem is g3 and now winning more material so uh black would be the up the rook and of course winning the game and uh, and yeah this is why in this position uh stefan Izbinski resigned the game so that's how rubinstein style crystallized and he start to be really really um powerful in the improving the position of each piece and then executing the perfect attacks against the opponents i leave the link in the description to analysis of this game so feel free to check the study on the leeches and also if you like this video press a like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and um, yeah subscribe if you don't want to miss any more material about akiba rubinstein uh, leave the comment and thanks for watching and see you in the next one